Electrical devices are always connected in what is called an electric circuit. The electric current has to be allowed to flow out of, in this case, the battery from this so-called terminal through this wire, down through this wire, up and through the light globe, down and through this wire, and then up and then through this wire, and then back to this terminal of the battery. It's a continuous loop, a circuit in fact. If I connect just one wire, the electricity can't flow at all. Remember, electricity is just a flow of electrons through a wire of some sort. You can't just connect one wire to a battery because the electrons just can't move in a current if there's nowhere for them to go. Batteries are pretty complicated, but when they're connected, a bunch of chemical reactions occur which push the electrons around the circuit. But the chemical reactions can only occur if the electrons end up going back into the battery through the other terminal. It's the same with generators. The electrons in the coil of wire that is spinning between the two magnets get pushed out of the coil through the light globes and then back into the coil again. A generator is literally an electron pump and the electrons just move around and around in a continuous unbroken circuit. Now all light globes have two connections, which are also called terminals. On this light globe, the two terminals are on the bottom, but on this light globe, one terminal is on the bottom and the screw itself is the other terminal. So in the case of an incandescent light globe, when it's connected, the current flows in through one of the terminals, up one of the supporting arms, across the filament, down the other supporting arm on the other side, and out of the globe through the other terminal. The filament is so thin that it gets really, really hot, hot enough to start giving off visible light. LED lights, motors, heaters, and in fact all electrical devices also have two terminals, and the electricity has to flow into them, through them, and then out of them again. So, this is the simplest electric circuit you can get. To turn the light globe off, I can just disconnect the wire, but there's a much better way. I can use a switch. For the electric circuit to be complete, the electric current has to be allowed to flow from here to here. So, I can place a switch between these two points. I'll need another wire. Now, when I press the switch, the electric current can flow through this wire, through this wire here, up and across this arm here to this connection here, through this wire, up and around through this wire, through the light globe, back through this wire, and then back to the battery. When the switch is released, the circuit is interrupted and the electric current can't flow anymore. Now this switch is just used for school experiments and demonstrations. The switches that turn on lights in your house are basically the same, but they've been designed to stay on and off and to be screwed into walls and door frames. This simple electric circuit is pretty much the same as the circuits in our houses and in our buildings in general. When a building is being built, electricians lay electrical cables inside the cavities that will be created once all the walls and ceilings are in place. We never really think about it much, but there are cables running all over the place inside buildings. The walls and the ceilings are then put in, and the electricians connect the cables to switches, wall sockets and light globes, and to the grid. Even though it may look pretty random initially, all of the circuits we use every day are basically the same as this one. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Liakos Educational Media's Shedding Light on Electricity, Episode 2, Electric Circuits. The Shedding Light on Electricity series teaches students all the essentials of electricity, including how it's produced, how electrical circuits work, what voltage, current and resistance are, and a whole lot more. In Episode 2, Electric Circuits, we examine how lights, switches and other electrical devices are all connected either in series or in parallel with each other. So how do they wire up the lights in your house so that in some rooms the light switch switches on only one light, but in other rooms the light switch switches on two or more lights? And how is everything wired up so as to allow us to turn the lights on and off in different rooms independently of one another? Like all of our programs, Shedding Light on Electricity Episode 2 Electric Circuits comes with an outstanding worksheet that helps students to learn the content and to acquire strong critical thinking skills. Visit our website at liakoseducationalmedia.com to download the worksheet, and in fact all of our student activity sheets, including a wide selection of pracs. Our website also has details about how you can watch the whole program, and the whole series. 
thanks again for watching this excerpt.